Uh, welcome to Friday morning, folks. Nice to have you with us here uh, on the platform. We've got an awful lot to get through today. Um, and we're going to start off with a, a an area of the economy I find very interesting and I think many people find problematic, to use that wonderful uh, woke word, the energy uh, industry uh, and our local energy industry and energy exploration. Um, the Labor government, with the encouragement of the Green uh, Party and their Green, well, partners, if you want to use that term, uh, have placed a moratorium on uh, oil and gas exploration in this country, a moratorium that the National Party says it will uh, get rid of. Uh, but other legislation uh, before the House, Megan Woods has announced, and the claim is that prior to this change in legislation, the situation is a government couldn't really say no to someone looking for oil and gas or to uh, energy explorers in this country. I find that a strange claim given that they could put the moratorium on, um, which would suggest this never was, uh, that the evil oil and gas industry never had the right to pillage, rape and roam the country looking uh, for energy uh, at any time in our future. But this legislative change has been flagged and, of course, been um, promoted and reported in the legacy media. So what is it all about? Well, uh, to find out, uh, I thought the best thing to do, go to the people who are doing the pillaging and raping. I say that with my tongue in, in my cheek. Um, the oil and gas industry, who are represented by their sort of umbrella lobby uh, advocacy group, Energy Resources Aotearoa, and their chief executive, John Carnegie, joins us now. John, welcome uh, to the platform. Good morning. Lo lovely to have you in the studio. Yeah, too, lo I, lovely I to be add. back. Um, Post-COVID, post-COVID, as it were, we can all get together. All right, this legislation that Megan Woods, the Energy Minister, is proposing, will it make a significant difference to the way your members operate? Well, uh, yes, it, it will, Sean, actually. It's a, a, as you pointed out, with the um, offshore um, oil and gas exploration ban, this is a, a cumul another cumulative blow um, to the sector and the incentives that it faces to invest, and that's kind of the crux of this. And I guess... Um, I think although you said it in tongue-in-cheek, I have to say that my sector is a very responsible uh, sector, both environmentally, uh, and socially and economically. So, All right. So what will this affect? Your right or your ability to search for energy resources and reserves where? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I, I, I guess it's been played up as um, providing the minister and the government with greater flexibility, right? Um, and so there's the, the crux of the, the debate is around removing this word to promote... Mm -hmm. um, out of the legislation, and it seems like a small change, but of, and in fact, you could kind of almost yawn at some mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. and kind of go, oh, well, it's a legislative tidy up. They've hardly promoted yeah. uh, the sector since 2018. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of, I'm not too quite sure why they think they need flexibility given that they haven't promoted yeah. this, the, the sector, but actually, it's a terrible signal. I mean, it's actually just quickly worthwhile thinking about what the Crown Minerals Act is. Mm -hmm. Actually, what the Crown does is. It is with various nuances that it owns all of our oil and gas mm. and and um, range of our minerals and it actually holds them in trust on our behalf. Yeah, for the um, nation. For the nation. Mm. Um, actually, what the rem removal of the word promote um, suggests is actually they no longer see it of being of any benefit to New Zealand. To have and, natural resources and, in the ground or under and, the ocean or and, anywhere. And to utilise them. And I guess the key thing from our perspective is you know, it is a cumulative um, blow. You know, we've had the oil and gas ban. We've um, got the 100% renewable um, energy target. We've got the Lake Onslow proposal. We've mm. had some onerous decommissioning regulations introduced. Um, we've had some massive delays in processing change of control. So, you know, all of these things combine and mm. actually shout, we're not open for business. Um, yeah. And that kind of strikes me as a bit discordant at a time where we're, we've got these security of energy supply issues. Mm. In fact, just last night, Sean, the, uh, uh, the chair of Transpower said that last winter was a close call for New Zealand and mm. our ability to keep the lights on. And I think the words he said, um, next winter will, could be far worse. They're his words. Yeah. Far worse if the conditions don't coalesce correctly. So, so you would argue, your industry you would argue, we should still be looking for energy, natural energy re resources in New Zealand, 
and this sends a signal that will discourage the companies that do that. Yeah, well, look, because obviously it's a gamble, a prospect. It's prospecting, yeah, it isn't is. it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, look, look. Basically, what we argue is that we want to be pragmatic about this stuff. You know, we want to be constructive and practical, not dogmatic. Um, and you know, we want to play a key. In fact, we have to play a key role as we transition, Sean, because mm. when you look at the numbers now, sixty percent of our energy and use in the economy is non renewable 60 percent yeah so we have to be a a key player in whatever we do next and i guess that kind of comes down to my perspective this fuel-based finger pointing mm. it's not that you know we just don't think yeah. it's the right way to do it i want to deal with another issue that has been mentioned in coverage of this and that is that the bill will also lay out or codify minimum requirements for engagement with iwi um or with tangata whenua yep uh, does that give them some say over what your members do? Look, to be honest, Sean, we're struggling to see what the problem is there. All of my members actively engage with local iwi, the, the rohi in which they're operating. Uh, it's, it's incredibly active and responsible. Um, so we're just struggling to see what the, the problem is that's being addressed there in the legislation. All right. So, OK. Um, yeah, maybe they want to... Uh, be compliant with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. That might be the issue. It might be a, a code thing. It might be part of co-governance. Uh, look, the other thing that's happened this week, though, we, I must say our listeners and the platform itself is rather disappointed it hasn't had more coverage. In fact, it happened about a month ago. The United Nations came out with a new report that far from suggesting that the world was on fire and uh, apocalypse is round the corner, they have halved, essentially, their expectations for global warming by the end of this century. They're saying 2.5%, maybe. At current, currently, the Paris Accord is aiming for 1.5%. Yeah. We're nowhere near the 8.5% that Al Gore was banging on about. Uh, I've got to be honest and say it seems to me that global warming, climate change, which has been used as the stick to which to beat the oil and gas and the fossil fuel industries um, back. Um, I, I don't know, the data just doesn't seem to be panning out the way the uh, the greenies say it was. Well, look, you can take any sort of view about where the numbers are going to lie, and they will just naturally bounce around, but I think the, the, the sector's being responsible. It wants to play a part in the transition. Mm. Um, well, hang on, is there even a need for a transition? Haven't you guys kind of sold yourselves out? Do we really need to transition? When we look at the data coming through now, no. when we don't see coastal areas, people are still being insured and buying coastal real estate, Wellington is an underwater, birds aren't falling from the sky. Yeah, those, some, of, some of that stuff's cumulative and, and it could take centuries to, to happen. I think, I think the key issue here, uh, Sean, is actually that... Um, the world's constantly in transition. Businesses mm. constantly transition. Yeah. Right? So, you know, what we've got here is an emissions trading scheme with a $90 a tonne carbon price. So we will transition. Yeah. And so the question is just how rapidly and how efficiently yeah. we transition. Shouldn't the question be whether or not that is a good idea now, the ETS, or whether or not it isn't all predicated on a sort of global paranoia? No, I think I think it is about just being responsible and how we, how we go forward. To be honest... The rate of change in climate change action will be dictated by consumers and they're clearly sending signals that they want um, changes in sources of energy. Yeah, because they've the, been largely propagandised by a global well, kind of paranoia. Well, well, you might think that, but it is the day-to-day -day reality that the yep, business and, sector and operates the, and in. And I appreciate that, exactly. Yeah. You've got to move to the market that, yeah. you, that you are serving. Yep. Uh, all right. As far as these legislative changes are concerned, and I understand what you're saying is you seem slightly confused by why the government had to do this, wanted to do this. What is the timetable for change uh, from Megan Woods on this? Oh, um, it's pretty rapid. It's gone through the House under urgency. urgency. urgency yeah. Um, with whatever the, however the 40 other bills or whatever. Yeah. So it's in the select committee. Uh, my understanding is they want this done, done and dusted first quarter of, end of first quarter of next year. So... So pretty quickly, but you know they are giving, unlike the oil and, and gas ban, they you yeah. know this thing has been fairly well signalled. 
um, and they are giving us the opportunity to have a select committee, decent select committee process. So okay. they, they should be congratulated Not that they for that. They'll necessarily listen to you, but you, you do get a chance to have your well, it's say. It's a contest of ideas. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you talked to those who might be government after the next election? Do they have a different attitude than the current administration? Oh, look, we talk to everybody, Sean, and yeah. um, I, I think from recent speeches by their energy spokesperson, Stuart Smith, I've made it quite clear that there's an alternate future um, for our for our sector. Would they revoke this piece of legislation? Um, quite possibly. Quite, OK, yep. that's not a guarantee. That's well, quite look, you know, they've come out and talked about reversing the oil and gas ban... Yeah. Um, and removing the overly onerous decommissioning yeah. um, um, legislation. So th you'd expect this to be as yeah. a part of the mix. The government has sold this as it being able to say no to oil and gas exploration. Well, they could, could, say, no, they could yeah. say no any, anyway. Anyway, that was the point I wanted to make. It seems to be fixing a problem uh, that did not exist. Well, uh, so actually, it's also, Sean, interestingly, it's, look, it's a fairly, as I said, you know, this fuel-based finger-pointing actually isn't helpful. Yeah. It's also incredibly one-dimensional. Mm. They're saying we need to get rid of this fossil fuels to help us with climate change. Mm. Actually, in fact, they argued in the court uh, three or four months ago and won because the, the, their issuance of permits in Taranaki was being challenged in the courts and yeah. they argued that they actually could issue permits and achieve their climate change objectives. All so right. these two things aren't mutually exclusive. And, of yeah. course, I guess the key thing for us is the energy system is pretty complex yeah. and taking a one-dimensional view of these problems, yeah, yeah. it's going to lead you. Helpful. It's going to lead you into trouble. What's the state of the exp energy exploration industry in New Zealand right now? Is well, there actually, anything actively going on? Oh yeah, on? actually, it's in pretty. It's in pretty good heart yeah. within the existing constrained closed system they're now operating in. Yeah. Um, but we've got uh, um, a number of our members who are actively, um, actively trying to prove up their resources. Yeah. Um, both onshore and offshore. Um, I don't know whether you've seen the publicity around the the uh, rig that OMV yep. have offshore Taranaki, which yeah. is fantastic. So there's yeah. there's tens, if not hundreds, of millions of dollars yeah. um, being spent in the by the sector um, in in Taranaki, both onshore and offshore, and that's fantastic. And the issue actually is for us, mm. and I guess it kind of plays back to this piece of legislation. Our fields are reaching end of life. Yep. And so, the established current fields, yep. So no one should be surprised with the, all of the incentives that the sector is being sent that we eventually reach a point where we start to constrain gas supply because there's not enough investment just to keep the, the fields operating. Now, yep. you know, it's interesting because there are some parties in the House that actually want this stuff terminated immediately. Yeah. We've got a real life experience of how that plays out in Europe yeah. right now. Yeah. And it's ugly. Yeah. And from our perspective, we'd rather avoid that. I don't want that happening here in my God yeah. zone. Yeah. Um, um, in my lifetime. Yeah. But, you know, all of these things are cumulative and they're starting to have an impact on the incentives to invest. Yeah. And when you don't have, you know, as I said, the other, the other um, 60, so the 60%. Yeah. Which is non renewable energy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but if you don't have alternatives to replace that and you're running your sixty percent down, mm. what do we do? Actually, it's a recipe for high, screamingly high energy prices. Prices, yeah, and people go cold and people die actually. Is the truth of it. Uh, John, lovely to see you uh, in the studio. Thank you for clarifying that for us and good luck with your submissions next year on this rather confusing piece of virtue signalling legislation. Thank you very much, Sean. Cheers. That yeah. is John Carnegie, the Chief Executive of Energy Resources Aotearoa. And that was their name. I didn't say that. Don't send me texts.